he's actually saved me 2,500 bucks today, uh, talking me out of going with the dot com. And I, I was able to get the three other sites, the dot us, dot co, and uh, dot pro. Uh, that, was a, yeah, that was the reason, that was one of the reasons I, I, I made the video a little bit too late. Some dude had paid like 3,500 for a dot com, and I'm like, man, it's just not going to help you get found on the internet. On, on the internet. It's just you're not going to get any return on the money except for is it going to be easier to remember uh, as in dot com. But, man, if they just if they just like if they seen Alan's truck and it's Alan, you know, it's like uh, Murray professional painting uh, and it is dot yours is dot com. Right, uh, Alan? Yeah. 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 But as long as they do, most of them, as soon as they're typing in Alan or, or Alan Murray or Murray professional and painting, you know, you want to show up in that area. All right, guys, we are live. Brian Allen's here, the contractor's contractor, another episode of <laughs> Dominate Your Trade. We've got a different one today, but uh, I want to kind of share with you guys uh, uh, some, some key action steps from the very beginning before you even start your business till the day it is and, the, and when the time comes, you want to sell your business. We've got some great contractors with us, uh, going to be sharing some of their stories introducing themselves, uh, asking questions, uh, sharing what has worked, what hasn't worked. So uh, you want to stick around for this one. We're live. I got a couple of people trying to get in here and I don't know why their, their computer is not logged in and, uh, Hey, real quick before we get started, let, let, let's just start with uh, Big Ragnar Floors, Gus. Gus, say hi, man, and uh, you know, just give us a, a, a brief who you are, where you're at, and what it is that you do. Uh, my name's Gus. Uh, I own Ragnar Floors. We do hardwood floor refinishing installs, pretty much all the service work around wood flooring. Uh, owned and operated uh, flooring companies for just under 15 years at this point. And you're getting ready to uh, launch Ragnar Roofing or something, right? I like Ragnar yep. Roofing. Ragnar but, uh, Roofing as well, yes. Yeah, that's going to be here this summer. So. Yeah, because when I first met you, I just, I like the whole name Ragnar. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just a Viking freak anyway. Just <laughs> anything Viking, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. It's, it's, I don't know, it's an obsession. It's, it's crazy. I'm going to the Renaissance Fair this weekend. I'll be wearing my my kilt and my samurai sword and like I'm the Highlander <laughs> or something, but it's, 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 man, it's, it's, it's just so much fun. But, uh, Hey, uh, Charlie, Charlie Engel, introduce yourself, please. Speaking of Renaissance, my business name is Renaissance hardwood floor polishing and maintenance. Uh, I'm out in McKinney, Texas. We're about 30 miles North of uh, Dallas. And, uh, all I do uh, now is I used to do everything, refinishing installations and all, but I'm old and I can't get around like I used to. So, uh, about 15 or so years ago, I switched over to just the cleaning and polishing. I had so many clients that I had installed their floors back in the early 80s uh, that there came a time when they needed to be maintained and they were all calling me. So I just sort of worked it from the, the hardworking end of it, since I do everything myself, to down to the uh, just the cleaning and the waxing, the old fashioned paste wax and polishing. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. For some reason, I mean, uh, I don't know. You're, you're changing your whole name. You're changing everything. I don't know if I ever ask you why, but I, I know it's you're, your fault. You're getting. I know you're getting ready to. Uh, no, it's it's <laughs> your fault. You said shorter name, and, and I, I think that's going to work out great. Uh, I'll probably still keep Renaissance in there for a while. Yeah, I, I, I do want it to specify. A lot of people don't completely understand what polishing and maintenance means. Yeah. I've actually gotten that from a buddy of mine. He had as a business in. Uh, Great Britain, and that's what he has on his uh, truck is polishing and maintenance. So I sort of stole that, but I'm going to yeah. slow it down now to just the uh, wood floor cleaning. Man, if, uh, I hope I, I hope I talk about that later on. But that whole what you just said, you know, they don't understand what cleaning and maintenance and all that stuff is. But uh, hey, Mr. Alan Murray, that's uh, we can barely see you, but we can definitely hear you. Alan, tell, tell us who you are, buddy. Uh, Here you my are. name's Alan. For Murray Professional Painting, we're located here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and uh, we specialize in high-end interior and exterior painting and refinishing. And uh, I guess painting is his side job. He's really a, a friggin' hunter, hunter guy, <laughs> and, 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 and fisherman, <laughs> son of a bitch. Hey, but that turkey you got a couple of days ago, how big was that thing? Uh, 25 pounds, like wow, the biggest uh, wild turkey I ever shot. 
Man, I, I seen the pictures of it, and I was like, that son of a bitch. Because <laughs> like, I'm always posting stuff on the like, like, I chased yeah, this I, thing down with a shotgun and shot it. And I, the, little, it, the new little decoy that I bought to, you know, draw it in, I didn't even use it this season. Oh, man. Yeah, the pictures look great. And then you, you took it home and cut it up and cooked it instantly almost, I think, right? Yep. 10 hours smoking, and uh, yeah, it's phenomenal. We put it yeah. in a brine, smoked it. Man, <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Uh, yeah, it's like I don't know. And then the deer was—I mean, he's just big time. Uh, and uh, Charlie says he's a Charlie's a farmer, right, Charlie? Well, gardener, I guess. Gardener. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. He's a pretty big I mean, gardener. So he yeah, hates deer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah if, they, if they got into his yard, he would. But uh, so, if a deer's yeah. around here, he is seriously lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, McKinney, Texas. He's in the middle of the city. Hey, so uh, this w w what I wanted to do tonight, and, and and hope you know when people are watching this later on, we got a lot of people right now watching. But it just you know, if you're out there watching, uh, either either now or later, it doesn't matter. Just you know, ch chime in, ask questions or whatever. I kind of want to just start from the very beginning, and I'm in a lot of different contracting groups, but uh, I don't know. It's always how do I get leads? How do I get jobs? How do I get you know this or that and this. There's a lot of questions that as soon as I read it, I think, fuck, you need to stop what you're doing and go get a job. It's a, uh, it, 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 and it's, and I wish someone <clears throat> had told, told me that. I wish I had learned a lot more before I went out and started doing my own thing. And I don't know, I just ended up accidentally owning a business or whatever. I don't know. It's just, I didn't have any clue about business. I just knew that I wanted to make more money than what the guy I was working for was going to pay me. And, and just, you know, you do some side jobs and you think, well, shit. Uh, if I can do that, you know, you make more money in a weekend than you, you make, you know, all week or all month, you know, working for somebody and you, you know, then you're, you get, you know, your eyes get you know big and you start biting off more than you can chew because you run out of friends to work. And then you start, you know, and that, you know, there was no freaking internet back then, but now they, they run the Facebook going, Hey, I went out on my own and now I don't have any work now, what? yada, yada, yada. So I, it just, so I want to kind of just started from the from the very beginning, from that first effing thought of, I ain't going to work for this guy anymore. I'm going to start my own business or for whatever reason. I mean, it's like, if, if you have it in your heart to be a business owner, it's, uh, you're, you're almost unemployable. It's, uh, you, you always think you can do it better than the guy you're working for, or you want more money, you want more freedom. At least that's what we tell ourselves in the beginning is, is you want to work for yourself. So you make all the money and, 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 and spend time with your family and, it almost, I mean, I don't know, it, it doesn't end up working that way for, for most guys. Uh, we end up working, you know, 80 hours minimum because we're doing everything uh, to where, I don't know, it's just, you know, my, my buddy Anthony says there's no shame in that game you know, if, if that's the way you want to do it, you know, but that's a hard way to go through life. Uh, man, when you're answering the calls, bidding the jobs, figuring everything out, running around, picking up material, just putting out fires, going back to jobs that you did last week that you got to touch up and you're just, and you're maybe working all day and then you're getting home trying to write up proposals and bid jobs. And it's, it's just freaking tough. Uh, it'll drive you nuts, but it's, um, and I don't, I don't think it's a better way than, than working for someone. It's like, you know, you get to say that you're a business owner and you're self-employed and, and I say, yeah, but you work for you and, and working for you sucks. So I'm, I'm going to give you some keys. Or, 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 so for me, in, in, in the very beginning, and even in my book for contractors only, I, I talk about the first thing you should, when you discover that you want to be a, a business owner, work for yourself, the first thing you should do is start by being the best employee that you can. Whoever the hell it is that you're working for is be the best, you know, just work for him, work your ass off, you know, be there early, work late, everything, and, you know, learn to live off of, you know, 20 or 30 percent of what you you make so you can save up, save up, save up. I know in my notes I have, you know, save a shitload of money uh, and, and, and tell whoever it is that you're working for that, you know, what your goals are. I mean, anyone that come to work for us, we have a whole you know program to where if that's what they really want, you know, we can put them on that path and we start teaching them the whole business side of it and, and what to do. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'd, I'd like to start it off or, or help them and not so much a franchise looking back i wish i had did that but normally when you when you train guys and teach them the business part of it and how much work it is a lot of them end up going oh man i'd rather just be you know just keep doing what i'm doing clock in in the morning clock out go home and not have to worry about the business side of it 
It's like when you make these how-to videos for homeowners, when they really see how much freaking work goes into what we do, they're like, man, I didn't know it was all that. Let me just call a professional. Uh, so you think you're, we think we're making videos so that, and, and, and putting ourselves out of work, but I'm telling guys, it's like, no, when they see all the work that goes into what we do, they're like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. Let me call, you know, and who they're going to call, they're going to call the guy if you're in the neighborhood uh, that was trying to teach them how to do what it is. So in the beginning, that's key, is you want to save up a shitload of money and be the best employee that you can and start making all your plans right then, whether it's my book or other book or YouTube videos, you've got to learn business. Uh, and from there, you're doing these side jobs. Uh, right now, right off the bat, you guys know I'm, I'm, I just push video testimonials, video testimonials, video content, and every job that you do from, from the time of listening to and watching this video right now is every job should be its own little home makeover, meaning videos, uh, of how you're doing it, what you're doing it, why you're doing it that way, the before, during, the after. Uh, then I put them all together. I do highlights of, 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 of particular jobs, but you're doing the pictures of it, all of it. So if you're working for some guy and you're doing, I don't know, one or two side jobs a month, even if it's every other month, before you, so you take a year to get all your ducks into order, man, that's a whole year or six months of what you, getting everything together so that when you do go out on your own, you're way ahead of the game. And I mean, and you got to set all the goals and all the other stuff. But right now, every job that you do should be video testimonials, video content, before and after pictures. Uh, and I know, Gus, you've got some great videos on your website and, and just floating around on the Internet. Have you found that to be true? Yeah. Uh, I probably started doing videos maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that I noticed an immediate difference. Well, I wouldn't say immediate, but like two or three months after I started doing them, when they started getting views, um, it just became a lot easier, uh, even when I go out for my sales calls. Um, because, they, you know, I've, I've shot so many videos that I literally they can watch an entire floor be done over the course of however long, you know, from starting yeah. to, uh, you know, replacing boards and, and flush mount vents, that kind of thing. Um, yep. So when I go there, a lot of times, they don't even have questions. They got sick of watching so many videos. They just decided to call. You know? Yeah, and and, and and Alan, you're the same way. You we we just I mean, like the two two or three video contents that you have. Because when I met Alan a year ago, and I told him, "Man, you gotta get video testimonial," and he's like, "Man, that ain't shit. I, I'll have I'll, I'll send you twenty tomorrow." And I'm like, "Okay, everybody says that." And then you know, two three a week goes by, and they're like, "How do you get video?" To? But Alan was like immediately sending video testimonials and i'm like what the hell was he just paying people off and is he hiring actors driving them <laughs> driving them with Starbucks <laughs> with her, <laughs> but you i mean well, you got some good ones like your pastor and his families and just uh but now you're doing the video content have you seen a difference with the videos oh yeah for sure yeah i mean a lot of times um customers will call them you know especially when you make a video and you're kind of becoming the subject matter expert on something yeah um, you know, when you come to that quote, they're like, hey, I saw the video and, you know, they may get one or two other guys out there, but, you know, they're just telling them, yeah, we're going to paint this wall or we're going to do this. They don't go into these like deep dive videos that they've yeah. seen prior to you showing up. Um, and it just, I don't know, it just kind of establishes you as an expert um, when you're coming into that situation. Yeah. And then uh, like right now, like, I don't know, you, I don't know just like the, uh, which one or two of the videos that you have on content, whether it's the primer or the car, something, what is it? Yeah, so I, I've, got, I've got like one that's done pretty well. It's like the three different types of caulking and like mm. you know, different products, caulking products we use, what they're used for, how they're used. Um, and then I think we have another one on primers because um, that's another common subject, like a lot of homeowners or even DIYers that are like terrified to do it themselves and they want to hire yeah. a pro. Um, they're always like leery, like, oh, do you just paint over existing or do you have to use this primer? When do you when do you use it? When do you not? Like just kind of simplifies it. And um, yeah, it really helps people out when they're kind of trying to pick the guy to do their project. So, yeah. And I know uh, Doug joined us uh, from uh, Princeton Harvard Floors up in the New Jersey area. Doug, say hi, brother. How are you guys? Hey, Doug, uh, Doug, you've got uh, several video testimonials, and, and Doug even got video testimonials in the middle of the freaking uh, the Rona, and uh, everybody's wearing masks and stuff, and you know it's like you know forget the six feet, get over here, get in the video. But uh, <laughs> and, and, 
So, hey, Doug, was it hard getting video testimonials? Not the few that I got. Lately, it's it's been like pulling teeth. It's it's like uh, I don't know. They want to be movie stars. They're not ready for the camera. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, and I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a whole training thing on just how to get video testimonials. It's like I I don't know. I don't know if I catch them off guard, but we're we're just we're just always filming. We're always doing Facebook lives, like you know, two or three, uh, you know, every you know, one or two a day anyway, just of the project. Well, you know, what we're gonna be doing today? Let's walk around and show you. Uh, you know, now halfway through the day or at the end of the day, we're cleaning up. We're showing another video. The homeowner's there. I'm saying hi. The homeowner's in it and just. But they see so many of them now. We have so many video testimonials to where the homeowner uh, is almost a little bit upset if you're not asking them to to be in one of the videos, uh, and they want to be. I mean, yeah, they love you, man. They love. You. <laughs> but uh, so it's like I don't know. So if whoever, whenever you're watching it right now, is like uh, video content is is, is key, uh, and and. So the video testimony, the, edu the uh, educational content videos is, is big time. Uh, and the, I'm going to jump ahead of myself, but through Google Maps, Google Business is uh, the questions and answers, like uh, whether it's on your website or on Google Business or on your YouTube, is Google tells you all of the questions that homeowners are asking about your industry. Uh, you just, you type in one question and then Google will give you an infinite amount of other questions that are being asked and you those are videos that you should be doing uh and i don't know where it is down here but it, it's a, 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 all of this isn't going to be in order but because even with your website and everything it's it, one dominating your trade is all about dominating the internet dominating the area that you're in uh and there's you know but the, the blogs the vlogs with a v uh, the content, answering those questions, always trying to just give, give, give is what's going to be, you know, helping Google find you, Yelp, uh, Bing, DuckDuckGo, all of that crap. Your internet presence and trying to help people is what's going to make these search engines put you in front of people. YouTube is, is, is huge. But as, so even before you start and quit the job that you have right now, though, these are some of the things that you need to be working on. Uh, the company name, the logo, the tagline. Uh, like a lot of guys come to me, we, we, we figure out a, a logo for them. I got guys that, that, that do the logos and we just work with it. But I know uh, Alan had one and Ragnar, he, he's got the friggin' bike in him and, and just, I mean, it's, it was already right off the bat as cool as it could be. And then the tagline, meaning, you know, what is it that they, they the little sentence that they read and, and remember you by. But the company name, for me, first company I saw was Adams Harbor Flooring, you know, Brian Adams. It was my name. And I was, man, do I ever regret that. It's like, just a, no offense, Murray, professional painting. It's just. No, I, dude, I regret it, too. I regret <laughs> it. Too. I yeah, could start all over. <laughs> yeah, when I sold the company, I was like, oh, shit, I'm still the one getting the company. I'm getting, oh, it was, just, it was a nightmare. Uh, I use, you know, uh, if I said it once, I said it a thousand times, feed your bank account, not your ego. So it, people are asking me all the time, hey, what about the name? What about the name? And so wh wherever your area is, I go to Google and ask Google, hey, what for this service, what terms, what words, what keywords are people using to search and find it? And that's how, like, even right now with, uh, with Charlie is – Cleaning hardwood floors was just the number one phrase that everybody in Texas uses, and Texas is big. Uh, so I'm like, just name it clean hardwood floors, whatever, you know, .net, .us, it doesn't matter. Just those three words is, are going to get you at the top of freaking Google, you know, faster and, and easier with the least amount of money spent. Uh, the, the, the last company that I just sold is only wood floors. Uh and they still ask, do you do carpet? I'm like, no, nah, man, only do freaking floors. <laughs> and, and, and before that, it was SoCal wood flooring. And uh, so I, I sold that off, but it was SoCal wood flooring because of Southern California. I'm hoping to hit that area uh, of Southern California. But it's just, uh, I, I let Google tell me what the, the main words are, and then I, I play with something to get in that. Two words, three words at the most is, is what you kind of want to do. And I think like right now, uh, since he already bought it, is I think uh, Charlie's talking about using uh, only wood, or only wood floors, uh, cleaning wood floors. Dot pro, uh, and I think by just mentally, we, we talked about this before we went live. Was when they hear the word pro, so they see 
uh, cleaning wood floors pro, they almost mentally think that you're the professional and Google or somebody on the internet must know that you're a professional and that's why they let you use the word, you know, pro. Does that make sense? It does. My wife, you see, just, walked, my wife that, just walked by and wanted to thank you for saving her $2,500. <laughs> Because yeah. if you see .org, most people know that .org, or they think .org means some kind of nonprofit organization. Uh, does anybody, do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, O-R-G. Yeah, and, and it's not. Anybody can have it. It's like, uh, I used to have a website with it, but you know, just, I, I quit using the website, so I, I don't use it anymore. But it's, it's, it's the words, and that's what marketing is, and that's why... Uh, the words that they read, like, you know, when we use Renaissance or whatever, it's like every word that they read is going to paint a picture in their mind. So when we do those before and after pictures, uh, like when we wrap the vans and stuff, get ahead of myself. But that's why you want to, the words that we use paint the picture. And the only way, that, the easier way to paint a picture in someone's mind is to show them the picture or show them the video if you can get them to watch it. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's why, like, the logos and the other crap, kind of means something um like on my rack on, on the vans and shit or the yard signs is i'm not a i don't care as much about the logo as i do that before and after picture it's like oh man it's like you know plaster the logo there and i'm like and the logo is cool to me because it, the logo usually meant something it's something that i liked or i don't know uh but if they if they see it and i'm driving down the freeway or they they're driving past someone's yard and i have the yard sign is you know that logo hopefully to grab their attention to look and read but nothing like a before and after picture especially when we're you know, at the industry that we're in whether it's a roof or the painting or whatever is we, we get to dramatically change people's homes so we should be able to, we should take advantage of that and use that um so again those this is way before you even quit working for the guy that you're working for right now and before you quit you know so you're going to figure out that name the logo um and and, and next is going to be the website uh, in, in my book for contractors only, I, I say it's the it's the heartbeat of your of your business, uh, and it's 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 so it's almost like right off the bat, it's, it, it almost has to be first right off the bat because we're going to be telling all of our friends, we're going to be getting business cards, all this other crap, everything is going to revolve around sending them to that website, whether it's just one page and just a little bit. But if you're doing what we're talking about right now. Even before you quit and start your own business, you've got all these great before and after pictures and different projects and the videos, some video testimonials. Bam, your website is done. Uh, and you just keep adding to it with the content and the blogs and the blog and all of that stuff. Does that make sense? What? Yes, sir. Uh, and then, so, um, and then from that, it's going to be, and then you're ready to quit and, and start doing your own thing. But as quickly as you can, there's nothing more important than Google Maps. Uh, it's just, man, I don't, I don't think I spent enough time talking about it. I've got videos on how to, you know, get ranked as as as, as far up as you can on your own. There's some behind the scene things that some of these guys do uh, with citations and geotagging and a, a bunch of other, you know, stuff that links you to other websites, but. And then you got to work it almost, you know, almost daily, but at least a couple of times a week, you know, you're posting there before and after pictures and tagging stuff and using keywords. But I got training on all that, but Google my business and making them send the uh, the postcard and getting on the Internet, because that's that's really the only way you can get on the front page of Google for free uh, is Google Maps. And 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 Gus, that's pretty much you, you get a shitload of work just from Google Maps, right? I do, yeah. And uh, the Google My Business is is uh, is key. I, I try to ask for reviews on everyone on there. And you just, yeah, I use it a lot. Probably, yeah. I, I don't know how many links, but yeah, that and one other source is pretty much all my advertising. And I don't yeah. even use Google AdWords or anything. No, no. Uh, uh, so, it's, so it's that. And then, um, it's, so it's the Google Maps, the YouTube, Facebook slash Instagram. Uh, and again, I've got training on all of them, but you need YouTube because YouTube is the, the uh, second largest re, uh, search engine in the world. Google's number one, YouTube is number two, and they're both connected. Uh, when, you, when you can connect your Google My Business and your YouTube with your website, is that's what's really, with 
because all of them are going to be sharing the same content and links in the name of your business, the address, the phone number, we call it the NAP. But all of that's going to be linked together to give you the huge you know, footprint on, on the internet. Uh, I'm not for or against Yelp, but Yelp has a huge footprint on the uh, internet, uh, yellow pages, all of this stuff. That's like some of the citations that we do in the back part of getting you ranked on Google, Ma uh, Google Maps. Uh, Yelp, the only thing I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of is once you kind of buy into their, pray, their, their once you start giving them money and then you try to stop giving them money, they'll like hide your, 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 your good comments and they'll just, they, you kind of become non-void on Yelp. So I, I just heard horror stories about them. I've never used them outside of, we've had a ton of clients that are Yelp people and go on and leave reviews and stuff for us. And we've had nothing to do with them except for what homeowners have done. Uh, and we, and we get calls from Yelp, but Yelp, Microsoft, Amazon, like Siri and stuff, they're all kind of in cahoots to, to go after Google. And uh, it's getting more and more to where people are speaking to the phone. Hey, uh, Alexa, find a wood floor paint, or painter near me or something. So that, that voice search is becoming more and more you know, potent. And, and, and you've got to be in there with those questions and answering. And so it's, I don't know, it's, it, we almost have to play, you know, that part of the game but they're there instagram the same thing and and, and facebook is uh i'm not a huge fan of, of facebook but it's for me it's the it's the least it's, it's never in in any time of history have we ever been able to rent a billboard and that's to me that's what facebook is but you've never been able to rent a billboard as cheap as you can or radio advertisement like you can with facebook uh, if you don't get crazy and start doing a, a shitload of advertising with them, just a couple of dollars, you know, a, a week, five dollars a, a week, ten dollars a week at the most, uh, good content videos. I've got a uh, a free book I give to everyone. Do Facebook ads work? Uh, I try when a contractor comes to me. I try to get them away from Facebook leads as quickly as I can, only because of the quality of leads that I found. Uh, and, and I've got 12 hours of training on Facebook, and uh, we don't use Facebook. My wife is like, what in the hell are you doing? You don't use Facebook. I said, well, I used it for a little while. She goes, but you didn't like it. I said, I know. That's what I'm just, you know, the leads that we, that's how I know. When I, I'm, I'm always on, in, in these groups talking about, it takes about 25 Facebook leads to equal one Google lead. And I say that because I, I effing went through it. I lived through it for over a year. And then these other contractors that I work with, uh, most of them have the same experience. Anyone here use Facebook ads? I have. It, 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 did you get anything from them, Doug? I've got a I've got a couple jobs actually from Facebook ads. Um, I thought they were coming from Google ads, but when I asked, they said it, they saw me. It wasn't. You know what? It wasn't Facebook ads. They saw me on in the Facebook groups. Okay, so Facebook I, groups. I do are better in the Facebook. groups. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, that's a great point because if you're in some of these groups, these local groups, the city groups, uh, all of that, and you're just in there being nice and giving content and helping people on how to do it or questions to ask, all of that kind of stuff, they look at you like, well, how come you're not begging me for work? It's like, I don't need to, you know, it's like, and, and they come to you. Uh, and I know I Alan, don't know. Oh, say I'm sorry. I was going to say, sure. I've gotten exactly one job off of Facebook uh, ads that I've ran. I ran them for about four months. And I got one job, and uh, that was a couple years ago because I don't I don't really do that anymore. Yeah, so you, I can give you a I can give you a personal experience on Facebook ads. So, uh, uh, what do we got here? so without naming names, I hired a professional agency to run them for me uh, to basically complement what Brian was doing for me with the the Google ads, and it was triple my marketing budget and wasted probably 40 hours of my time in over the course of a month chasing down like just dead end leads i mean the leads i was getting um i mean they were just terrible like we're talking like now there's nothing wrong with this but like fixed income or you know food stamps um and like you would think with facebook you know 
you go on there and it says CEO of this or, you know, lawyer at this law firm. So in theory, you would think you'd be able to get in front of your ideal audience better with Facebook than Google. And it's, oh. just, it's just not true. Yeah. And then, um, because if you think about it, who are the people that are on Facebook eight hours a day? It's not the lawyers and the CEOs. It's the people that don't have money and have nothing else to do with their time. It's the, uh, yeah, the person that should be, uh, it's the person that should be working. Exactly. Uh, I have, just to caveat that though, I have got work on Facebook. Um, usually it's off my own Facebook page and they're just scrolling content. Um, and we've run some ads, you know, done some boosted posts. Those don't really yeah. work that way. But just general free content that seems, yeah. I've, got, I've got maybe 10, 15 grand worth of work off that last year through Facebook. Yeah, and, that's awesome. a, yeah and, then, cause, and that was us. It's like, uh, we had to go through so many leads to get one or two that really qualified for our price, you know, our, our price point. Uh, you know, but I am a fan of like, you know, for a couple, like I said, a couple of dollars a week, uh, and, and, you, and you can go in and you can set kind of like your audience, your area, uh, homeowners, that kind of thing so that you're, and you can run these ads and, uh, so that you're like these, like those content videos that you have, uh, and just, or the before and after picture, but with like you know, six questions to ask every contractor before you you know, hire them or something. You're given value, a lot of value. And, and then, so you can run one or two of those all the time for pennies on the dollar. So they're always seeing you, always seeing you. Because most of I mean, it's, that's why I say it's like the billboards. We can rent the billboard on the freeway and people are driving by all day long. But how many, you know, and you and, and the billboard company is going to say, oh, my God, you're being seen by, you know, 60,000 people a week. And it's like, yeah, but how many of those 60,000 people, you know, need, need their house to be painted or their roof to be replaced? I, I only want to be in front. I only want to be in front of people that need the roof to be replaced. Uh, you know, but they see you all the time. So when they do go to Google or, or wherever and they're searching, and they see you know you on Google Maps or they see your Google ad, they go, "Oh my God, that's that guy that's on Facebook all the time." That that kind of stuff. It, it kind of really works. You've got to be seen everywhere. Uh, so it, Facebook has its place. Uh, and if you're watching this right now, in whenever uh, you know, shoot me a message. I'll, I'll send you the PDF of. Do Facebook ads work? Uh, then the yard signs. It's like yard signs are so inexpensive. Uh, it's almost a shame. It's almost illegal not to have them because you can get 10, 20 of them made up. But again, yeah, whether you're working with you, you really want it just to be eye catching. So they're imagine because they're coming home because uh, we, we may have a truck rack, we may have a trailer, unless you're leaving a trailer in the driveway. That's what we try to do all the time. So it's always there. Uh, and you can work out deals with the homeowner where you leave the yard sign, you know, for two or three weeks and you go back by and pick it up because, you know, people are, you know, they may be leaving before you get there. They may be coming. You may be gone by the time they get home from work, but that yard sign is always there. They're seeing it. Uh, they feel like if you're in their neighborhood doing work, they can trust you. That's why the yard signs work so well. If you're going to do door hangers or mailers, I'd like it to be wrapped around you're working in a certain area. So you're calling up the guy going, hey, here's the zip code that I'm working in right now. And then you've got it already set up to where, you know, we're working in your neighborhood. Normally, uh, uh, consultations and estimates are whatever, 25 bucks, 75 bucks. We can waive that because we're in your area right now working, yada, yada. But when they see you in the in that neighborhood, they kind of think, oh, well, if he's good enough for so-and-so, you know, they feel like they can trust you. Uh, and they may, it may, they may see it and go, oh man, we've been talking about getting it painted. We've been talking about getting the roof done, all of that. So it's, uh, the yard signs are so inexpensive and you get to, you know, keep them and, and they last, shit, I don't know, years and years if you take care of them, uh, you know, you know, pay a little bit more, get, a, get the better ones. And then it goes back to the same thing right now with the truck, the van, the trailer, uh, shirts, uh, the shirts are a little different because the shirt, I do blast the logo and the cool stuff and all that, you know, you know, specializing in perfection since 1984 and that kind of thing. But again, the, the truck, the trailer, the, the yard signs, it's that before and after picture that gets their attention. Uh, the name of the company, boom, 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 with dot, whatever. But you can put the phone number on there. 
I kind of go back and forth with it. I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I want to drive. I want to drive everybody to the website. We drive everybody to the website. Uh, if you're running Facebook ads, drive them to your website. Drive them to your website. Uh, it, it, when we get referrals, everybody's like, "Man, I do we do everything is word of mouth, word of mouth." When we get word of mouth referrals, they go to the website. We send them to the website. They've got to see the welcome video. They've got to see the video testimonials. They've got to see all of that stuff. We've got to build the reputation. They, we got to build that rapport before they get on the phone with us or fill out the form. I don't want to go through everything because I cannot build, even though it's a referral or they see the sign in the yard or whatever, they're going to call me up and now it's just me and them talking. I don't want that. When they call us, I want them to already know me. And that's how they like, man, when you see Alan's uh, welcome video, when you see Gus's welcome video, Doug's, all that stuff, they see the video testimonials. By the time they call you, they feel like they're calling a friend. Does that make sense? It does. You know, if you weren't going to do a phone number, uh, and I don't know, because I don't have them on mine, but I want to put them on there, but I want a dynamic one, a QR code. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about referrals? You get referrals. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know. I almost feel guilty. I almost feel like I have to do it because it was a referral. And I... We just we sent them to the website. I, I want them to go through the same system that everybody goes through. Um, and, I, and I know, uh, Charlie, you, you get a lot of referrals. That's how you get most of your work, I think, correct? You're on mute. Hey, Charlie, unmute yourself. Let me see. Maybe I can. Can't unmute. Charlie, unmute yourself. We can't hear that Texas accent. There we go. There we go. Sorry yeah. about that. Uh, the dogs were barking, so I muted it. So, yeah, as far as the referrals, most all come from uh, the clients that are on Facebook, and they share me so much with their neighborhood groups um, that they keep me hopping. I get at least three or four new calls a week from uh, one of the neighborhood groups that's, that I've done the work for somebody that lives out there. Hmm. And then, so when they call or you call them or they call you or whatever, I mean, they how do you start the conversation off? Just, you know, so, so and so said uh, nope. you did their house and blah, blah, blah. How almost every, almost every one, don't, they don't even ask for a, uh, an estimate. They just say, I, I know you did so-and-so's. Now these are high end homes and yeah. uh, neighborhoods. And they just say, just, if you'll give me an idea and I've got to work since I've been doing cleaning and polishing, you can pretty much tell them, I tell them a 60 cents a square foot to clean, but then if they will just count the areas, if they've got six rooms in a house, I tell them it's all, it's going to be about a hundred to $125 per room. And that gives them an idea without me even having to, to go out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, the, I mean, and that's a whole nother part, like it'll be in the book, but the whole over the phone pricing and you can't just be driving to every freaking estimate that you, every call that you, you get, uh, and going back to the videos, because there's so much to it, and I talk about it quite a bit, is uh, I make a point to where, like, and we do like we do some high-end stuff, uh, and, and I make sure I'm there with the camera showing it around and, 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 and uh, like, showing them the view and showing them this and that, because I want them to see that because it immediately puts me way above everyone else. And they see, like, oh, my God, they're working on those kind of projects, $8 million homes. You know, you know, twenty million dollar homes. Like I don't know, it's just at this freaking Malibu castle that's been in a lot of movies and other stuff. But it's like, so they know when they call you, they're almost expecting to have to pay more. What's up, Big Mad Penny? Uh, always find the content here informative. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, and but the videos, like, like we do, like I do two or three Facebook lives a day, but they all get downloaded. I have a, I have a lady that downloads them, uploads them to YouTube, does all the tagging, the, uh, all of that crap. You know, to give us the bigger in footprint, but I have a certain amount of videos that I already we we pretty much know where they're at. So when people are contacting us, we know their house, we know what they are. You know, we're I'm constantly sending them links to to videos of of projects just like the one that they're asking us to do. Does that make sense? And I know I think you do that too, right, Alan? Yep, yep. Some of my easiest sales have been sending like video testimonials. Um, photo albums of past projects we've done and then like informative videos explaining the process. Yeah. So, so the whole, the, the whole website, the, 
all that trailer, all that other crap. I mean, these are things that you need to be doing. You're, you're in business now. you got your Google My Business, your business license, your insurance uh, license if, if, if your state requires it. So many times I'm in these groups and these guys are like, man, I don't have anything booked this week or next week or how do you find jobs type of thing. This next thing is, uh, to me, every successful business starts like this. It's MLM, multi-level marketing, network marketing, pyramid schemes. Uh, I don't care what you call it. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and everyone's heard of it because if you haven't, I got an opportunity for you. <laughs> we, we, we can talk later. <laughs> and I've been in a number of them. Uh, but as soon as you uh, sign up with a multi-level marketing company, uh, whether it's Mway or, or uh, yeah, I can't even think of them, all the names of them now. They're everywhere. Uh, Herbal Life, uh, man, Isogenics, all of them. Uh, and some of the best products come from those companies. But when you sign up with me, I'm going to tell you is like, man, we're, you know, now you're in business for yourself. We're just the distributor for you. All you need to do is go out and get these clients, collect the money. We, we, we'll ship it. You don't even have to warehouse it. All that. So it's, it sounds great. It's, and, it, and it's okay. Uh, but I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna have you do is is write down the the names and phone numbers of 300 of your friends. Everybody knows 300 people, and, and you can go through the phone book, you can go through the encyclopedia, triggers, whatever it is. You you know go through the, just write down everyone, and most people will come up with 100. They'll try to stop at 75. You push them, make them come up with 150. Come on, you you gotta know someone. What about, what about this industry? What about this? You know this? Make them write down everybody. And with multi-level marketing, with network marketing, pyramid schemes, it isn't who you know. I don't care about those hundred names. What I care about is the hundred names that those hundred names know. Does that make sense? And the, the whole thing with network marketing is you're calling and you're bugging everybody so much that they don't even want to hear from you anymore. They, they see your number and they won't even pick it up. But you need to do the exact same thing, whether you just started your plumbing business, your roofing business, your flooring business. You, everyone in, in your circle, everyone that you used to know should know what it is that you know, that you, what, you, what it is that you do. You're calling them up and you're saying, hey, blah, 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 this, this, let me give you this, get an email address. Every month I'm sending out new content that's going to help you, something. And then tell, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Everyone. It's like it amazes me if you live on a street or a cul-de-sac, I can go up to you and ask you, hey man, how many people on this street know what it is that you do? Maybe one or two people. Maybe one or two people to where everybody in that neighborhood, in that city, should know it what it is that you do. And you should be everywhere you go, you should be telling people, man, blah, 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 what it is that you do, what it is that you do. Does that make sense? Yep. And it's yeah. and, and, when these guys are going, I, mean, I don't have any work. I'm like, man, call everyone that you know. Tell them what you, everything. They have to know what you, it is. It amazes me how many people don't, they'll be friends with people and church, whatever it is. They're like, hey, man, what's Bob do? I, I don't know. What, what what does Bob do? If 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 someone knows you and don't know what you do, something's wrong. You, you, you're you not talking enough. You're not telling people something enough. Uh, and, and I want to, like, uh, what I didn't mention was, was business cards uh, before the truck, the van, the trailer, all of that stuff. Later on in your business life, I'm not a business card guy. I haven't had business cards since 2001. The last business card I had was for my company, Endless Possibilities. Uh, but so if you're going to have business cards, again, it's it's you know the before and after picture. It's just the name. Send them send them to the website. Send them to the website. On the back of that business card, I like it to have referred by and then a line drawn out. So I can say, hey, Charles, man, like, here's a couple of them. Uh, write your name on the back, man. You know, anyone's ever looking for wood flooring, anyone's looking for a roof or whatever, you know, I want you to remember me. Uh, if someone calls me up and says they were referred by you, man, I'll send you, you and the wife to dinner, you know, something. I, I'd like to pay you for your effort. Uh, there's a book called The Greatest Salesman in something, but uh, he was a car salesman, but he, he called them bird dogs. You, everyone that knows you should be working for you and looking for your next client. Uh, I'm not a fan of business cards only because people go to networking events or they're like, they're somewhere and someone's like, oh man, let me see, you got a card? Blah, blah, blah. And if they're, if you meet anyone anywhere in the world that you think you want to do business with, you need their information more than they need yours. Email, phone number, something. 
tell them, hey, you know what, fresh out of business cards right now, let me get your email address and I'm going to send you over the, the, we have the seven secrets to refinishing hardwood floors, whatever it is that you have. And, you know, a, a book in your future, a booklet should be something that, and everyone here watching this video, no matter when you're watching it, you should have something like that, a cheat sheet, something. Uh, seven, you know, six questions to ask every contractor before you hire them. Something, send them some value, and you got their email address. You can always start, you know, sending them something every month. Uh, don't overdo it. Don't kill them with the, with the two emails a day. It just annoys the shit out of people. And even if they need your service, they probably won't use you. Uh, I like business cards for your employees, uh, your team members, family, whatever you want to call them. It makes them feel a part of the company. Business cards are ex, uh, extremely cheap. I mean, they're just, what, I don't know, you get 500 for like 15 bucks or something. I don't know, it's, it's crazy. But, man, if you can give the guys that work for you, your lead guys or something, hey, man, you know, here's your own business card. Type. Uh, it makes them feel a part of the company. They're going to be sharing it with all of their friends. Again, network marketing is tell a friend to tell a friend. They're going to be, oh, man, I got my new business cards, man. Boom, they're going to be sending them to everyone. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, so uh, all, all of that stuff. Running um, people on Facebook, too, if, like, at events like that, if you follow them on Facebook, they can start following you, and they might not, you know, do a job with you now, but, like, six months down the road, if they keep seeing your content, it can lead to pretty good things, I found. Yeah. Uh, this guy, Matt, says, as a GC, I have my wife, myself, friends, employees, drop my FB business link, whether... They're looking for a handyman, new addition, new build. Uh, the ones that turned down, we just declined. Telling them to call back in a few months or so, big time. Uh, one of the reasons, like, I don't, like Facebook is the new Craigslist and uh, Nextdoor app, uh, and there's a lot of them. And I, you know, the first 18 years of my life, I spent on welfare. It, it, the majority of my family members still live in trailers. Uh, they wouldn't be able to hire us for our services and there's just there's there's nothing wrong with that it's just that's not my clientele you've got to grow a business you've got to make a shitload of profit because you have to pay your employees enough money to stay with you you got if i've said it once i've said it a thousand times if you have to be there it's not a business it's a job and the only way you can pay someone enough to stay there and run the company as if it's their company is if you're paying them a lot of money and you're not going to be able to pay them a lot of money if you're not charging a lot of money. Uh, you need to take a pay cut. I mean, there's, I go into all of that later on, but it's, it, you, you need to make less money so you can earn more money. And, and, and that sounds kind of backwards, but I'd rather you pay whoever does the work deserves the money. But you can pay three or four guys what you would have earned yourself, and then you take a small portion of that. Because you can only make so much money with your own two hands, but you can have three lead guys, four lead guys with a helper, five lead guys with a helper, as much as you can put your systems in together to keep them busy. But you have to be able to make a profit. Nothing matters to me more than profit. The name of the game is profit. Uh, and for contractors only, it says there's only three reasons to start a business. Make a profit. Number two, help other people, serve people. Number three, make a profit. Everything is about making a profit. Uh, so these are like just some of the ways because you've got to get the leads. The phone has to be ringing. You've got to stay busy. Uh, one, one of the keys I want to share with you, what, what time? Are we running out of time? Uh, you guys are going to have to buy the book. Uh, what time? Before we get another 10, 15 minutes. So is master your trade. In my notes right here, I want to say master your trade. When I've worked with contractors, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you need to pick two, three things that you can just do all the time. And I always say, look back over the last three months, over this last six months, what did you do that made the most amount of profit for the least amount of effort? And that's what I want to focus on. Those are the key words I want to focus on when I'm running any kind of ads. Those are the key words I want to focus on when I'm naming the business. Is I want the, I want the most amount of profit for the least amount of energy. And I'm going to do that over and over and over again. And when I tell that to contractors, they're like, oh, man, I've already mastered it. I'm like, dude, no, that you need to perfect it. You need to do it so many times that you can do it 
twice as fast, if not three times as fast as your competitor, and it has to turn out better than the way your competitor would because you're doing it over and over again. So many times you're learning how to just cut off a couple of minutes here and there. Uh, Henry Ford, when he was building the Ford Corporation, his, his goal every year was to lower the cost of the truck for consumers, be able to pay his employees more, and have at the end of the year the company earn more profit three things that seems if you do all three there's no way they should work together you shouldn't be able to charge less pay more and have more profit but he was able to shave off a couple of seconds here a couple of minutes there he got so efficient at what he did he was better than all of his competition does that make sense because if you get this this is a big key to running a successful business you're doing it over and over and over again i know like alan was working with another guy right now, but you know, he's so he's buying a certain amount of the same set of tape, the same this, the same that, and that's what you learn when you're doing these same three things over and over and over again. The way you do it, you can do it blindfold, but you've got your system to where now when you're bringing in employees, you have your training to where it's they can't they almost can't mess it up because you've done it so many times and they're doing it. You don't you're not trying to figure out every job. How do we do this? And you're wasting all this time. You're buying material that you don't need. You're wasting a couple of minutes here, an hour there. At the end of the job, you're like, man, I thought there would be more profit. What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Anyone want to chime in on that? <laughs> I, I, shit, man. I wish I could get the numbers that you guys get in these other states, man. I had a woman call me the other day. She said, how much for sanding and staining? I told her five bucks. She paused. <laughs> and, uh, she, said, uh, she said, why so much? I said, that's cheap. She said, I got other guys. I got two other guys that uh, gave me $2 a foot. I said, all right, good luck. Ugh. I was I making mean, more than that in 1985. I mean, I, I just don't, I, I don't know, Brian. I'm no, done, it is, man. It's like, it, 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 it's, you got, I'm telling you, we moved to Georgia. We can start an operation <laughs> together. Um, you, you're you going to see in all of these groups, people are going to say, oh, man, raise your prices, raise your prices. You can only charge what someone is willing to pay. And if you've got five companies that do the same quality work that you do, maybe even better, maybe a little bit less, but if there's that big of a difference in the price, then you're just going to price yourself out of work, period. And, and Oh, I know. And, I haven't worked in two months. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 it ain't going to work because uh, I'm a huge fan of CrossFit. I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, and, and I started way back when, like a couple of years before the, uh, the, the Rona. And so, uh, but when the Rona hit, I, I quit. So when I first go, a buddy of mine tells me, hey, man, go over here, blah, 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 you're going to love it. I'm like, I don't want to do that shit. I ain't picking up big, no big-ass tires. He said, man, I've never picked up a tire. I've been there for years. Just go do it. You'll like it. So I went over there and I ended up liking it. The trainer that was there was like, he wouldn't, he was like, I don't care how strong you think you are, take all that weight off, and we're going to start with an empty bar. You've got to get the technique right. So he just, he was real, he was a sticker, just real strict on the, the, the technique. And, uh, and I really liked that. And he really knew what he was doing. So I was like, oh, man. But you know, they're hitting me with like 155 bucks a month, and I'm paying like $12 a 24-hour fitness. I'm like, oh, shit. That's a big difference. And uh, it's a, But I thought, oh, you know, it's worth it. It's worth it. Boom, boom, boom. So the pandemic hits. I don't go. And now I, I finally go back uh, several months ago at the beginning of the year. So I go back to the same place. The trainers that were there aren't there anymore. So now they've got subpar trainers. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Now they raise the price from like 150 up to like 185. I'm like, ah, and I'm like, man, now I'm paying more for less training. I'm like, I don't know. And then, uh, and they cut it down to like three days. And I'm like, oh, hell no. I said, and uh, I said, I need to be back on that uh, unlimited, like I used to have. Okay. But now they, that jumped up the price to like 225. I'm like, what the fuck? And so I called around. And there's like six or seven freaking CrossFits in, in a three mile, five mile radius of me. So it's like I can, I can pick and choose. So there's like two or three of them around here, better equipment, newer equipment, and better trainers for like 160. I'm like, why in the hell would I give you 225 if I can get better training at newer equipment for you know way less money? And so I was like, I'm like, I'm out, you know, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead. You know, I have no connections with y'all. It's like, uh, I'm not gonna over pay myself for no reason it, it better be a reason if i'm paying more money 
And so when we're as cons you know contractors, when we're charging more than a competitor, there better be an effing reason, and we better be able to explain that reason and and, and paint those emotions in their 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 mind and, and get them to trigger the emotions and get them to say yes. But I can only charge so much. Like you can only go so high, so much. It's like, it, it, does that make sense? It makes perfect yep. sense. It's it, it's you're only going to be able to charge what someone is willing to pay. And there's like I. In India and, and, and other these these other countries, and, and they're willing to work for like you know a dollar an hour and stuff. And and my wife is like, oh my god! And I'm like, man, that's like a hundred bucks an hour to, to, to if you're living in India or something. I, I don't know, but it is. It, it's just there's some areas that just I don't, for whatever reason. But if you got four or five companies doing what you do, you better you better have a reason for why you charge more. Uh, the videos, all the online stuff, the content, all of that stuff helps, you know, once they see it all first. But even then, that's only going to get you so far. And there's only going to be so uh, a, a small percentage of clientele that are willing to pay for that. I'm a little bit, you know, fortunate being in Southern California. I mean, the friggin' average house in this shitty-ass uh, county is a, a, a million one, just for the, uh, it, it, which is just ridiculous. And, and uh, I mean, that's 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 the other thing. Like, I mean, you go into these million. I mean, we just I was in a million dollar. They it sold last October for a, a million dollars. And, uh, and they still will be super cheap. Oh, man. You should see the floor they're putting in there. They're putting Bruce two and a quarter <laughs> that don't go together. It's incredible, man. Yeah. I said, man, you paid a million dollars for this house and then. It's incredible, it is, but you're right. Like, I mean, you're right, Brian. You can't, you can't. You're, I'm in a dead market, so I mean, it yeah. is what it is. No, it is. It's like you, it, it, it's just, but don't let me. I mean, you get in these groups, and some of these guys are all full of shit in, uh, anyway, saying what they charge and what they do and all this other stuff. <laughs> and I mean, Alan, uh, uh, you know, we ain't gonna say no names, but we, we, we've seen some of it. You know, <laughs> when, when the guys was showing a fucking video. Uh, bragging about the job he just got, and in the video he says he got the job because he was the cheapest one. I'm like, why the hell would you show somebody that? <laughs> it's all about it's all about your cost of living. If you're only if you can afford to live off two hundred dollars a week. That's fine. If you're living in New York and you're Never. making like a thousand dollars a day, that ain't cutting it. No, so so I'm gonna jump forward a ways. There's a lot to the whole business thing, but uh, I'm gonna kind of jump forward and get you to where. You build a business, for me, you build it so it runs itself or you can sell it. Uh, and for me, the first person I think every contractor should hire, uh, maybe they got a part-time helper, but you you need to hire, whether it's a virtual assistant or something, but you need to hire an office manager. Uh, as, as a business owner, your number one job is to replace yourself as quickly as possible. Uh, whatever it is that you're doing in the job, in the business, you need to get someone to do that for you. So you can move on and get better at this. But as an office manager, and again, virtual assistant, uh, maybe 10 hours a week, try to find some uh, nice older lady, 50 something, that maybe she wants to work a couple of hours. She used to work at a construction company, but she don't want to do 40 hours a week anymore, which is great. You don't have 40 hours of work for her. But all of the business stuff, all of the systems, the booklets, the the scheduling, the answering the phone, talking to clients, sending them the links of the videos, all of that stuff has to be done by an office manager. You have to work on the business to build the business. You can't do everything. You, you, you can, but you're going to burn yourself out. Uh, that's another thing is a lot of contractors right now want to try to buy into these uh, CRMs or these apps and put everything on, automa on automatic. A company that answers the phone will outsell a thousand to one a company who tries to have robots do it. Buy none. My, ask your wife. <laughs> Call the bank. Every time you have to hit that fucking button, you're pissed off and you want to cancel it. I mean, if, if, when someone calls you and looking for a service, answer the damn phone. Have someone answer the phone, send them the videos. You need your sales script. You need your cheat sheet for whoever is answering the phone. They could be, you may be in Minnesota. They could be in Georgia or something. You get somebody in Texas with that, that sweet sounding Southern twang or something. But And, and they know the questions to ask because you've already told them. It's like, and they're going to send them the videos and they're going to do this and that. And they're like, they're not going to be talking to a fucking chat box. 
<laughs> they're going to, they call, they're going to, they, they get frustrated, they hang up, they're going to call some, when they need your services, they want you. And if they found you on the internet, like, oh my God, look at this dude, he has read all these great testimonials and this and that, and oh man, if they call and you answer the phone, that's okay, I mean, it's okay, but I want you to be like the guy, like the president of the company. You can't call the president of the United States and just talk to him directly. You got to go through some, jump through some hoops. But uh, so when you do get on the phone because someone's answered or asked all these questions, made them send pictures, made them do this, whatever, they send the videos and stuff. Now all you're really doing is calling up just to schedule it or, hey, uh, you know, Jennifer in the office said you did this. I just want to call and, and let you know that, yeah, here's what we do. We come in, we're going to do this, blah, 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 blah. And by the time that you do get on the phone with them, they almost feel like they're talking to a celebrity. I shit you not. I mean, it just, it, it's crazy how that works. And and and, and I, I know Gus and, and Alan, with you guys with the videos, when you show up and they've seen your videos, they are like, oh, my God, hey, it's you, blah, blah, blah. Has that happened or not? Oh, yeah. They say, oh, it's the YouTube star. I hear that, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I had Alec and his wife on uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he's got a shitload of, of, of videos and that, that get watched. Uh, it, it, it's crazy. People from all over the world are, are, are watching his videos. Uh, learn how to run ads. Uh, learn how to run the ads for uh, how to hire employees, whether it's through ZipRecruiter, Craigslist, uh uh, man, what's the, what's the other one? That's it. Indeed, uh, all of those. And you've got to run, you got to write these ads. Well, one to, to, to hire good people, you got to have a company that a good person would want to work for. I mean, I've got hours of videos on training how to hire and fire and, and, and train employees. But first and foremost, to hire someone good, you got to have be a, have a company that someone would want to work for. But then you're writing this ad, so that they're reading it. And you got to weed through it in the ad. I mean, that's what I mean by when you've got to learn how to write the ad so you kind of weed people out from the very beginning. You have a designated phone number, and when they call, they got designated things that they have to do. So you weed a lot of people out right off the bat. Uh, but you got to learn how to hire and fire, but you got to learn how to train, all of that stuff. Put them on that that fast track to, you know, let them know how much they could make, get them to where I'm, – I'm huge on piecework. I grew up in North Carolina, furniture factory, furniture capital of the world. Everybody did piecework. The more chairs you put together, the more money you made. Uh, some dude did three chairs. He made a certain amount of money. But if you could do 10 chairs, you made way more money. That was fair. Uh, and, and so they get a big portion of the, of the project. So everybody knows in the beginning exactly you know, how it's going to be done, how much money he's going to be getting, uh, all of that stuff. If he has to go back and touch stuff up, that's on him. All of that stuff. You got to put your, your 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 systems together for selling the leads. You got to have systems for when the leads come in, how someone answers the phone, what they what questions do they ask, what videos do they send them, what do they do next. <laughs> Don't let an effing computer do it. It's just you, you're going to lose out on a lot of business. Uh, you, it, it's just too inexpensive to hire someone, a virtual assistant. Uh, I mean, there's companies that all they do is answer the freaking phone. You, you can start there. Uh, systems for doing the projects. I know like last year, me and Alan were putting together a pre-project plan, a post-project plan. He knew how every penny, he knew what he was going to do when he got there at seven o'clock. He knew what he was going to be doing by 11 o'clock. And then he'd go back and look at everything and figure out, again, it was, it was just really trying to fine tune everything, fine tune everything. But he realized, I mean, shit, Alan, you went from like 300 a day to like 1100 a day within two or three months, didn't you? Yep, yep. Started off at like 300 a day and actually got into the numbers, realized what I needed to charge. And yeah, it was, I think end of the summer, I was, had some days we were doing thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. Yeah, so, but, you, but if you don't know the numbers, if you don't have these systems in place, it's going to be, you can't track anything. So you got to have systems for all of this stuff. Uh, I mean, like I said, I've got videos and stuff, but I, I just want to give you as much as I can right now. We're, we're running out of time. And then, uh, but you got to learn marketing and marketing is not Facebook ads. Marketing is not Google ads. Marketing is not yard signs. Marketing, those are all the media that we use to share our marketing. The marketing, marketing is everything. From the time you say you're in business, everything you do becomes marketing. But the way you carry yourself, the way you drive into especially if you got your your truck wrapped, you pull into Target or you and you're cutting somebody off, all that shit, you don't get to do that anymore. I did a lot of speaking. Uh, I was in a speaking circuit for a long time. Uh, 
and did a lot of traveling with with, with guys like Mark Victor Hansen, Zig Ziglar, Les Brown. And, and Les Brown told me once, he goes, dude, you're on stage from the time you leave your house to to go to the airport to the time you get home from the airport. I'm like, man, what the hell does that mean? He's like, it's just you just don't know. Like, we're doing these big events. Shit, I could be, you know, driving to the airport and cut someone off, flip somebody off, cussing, yelling, yeah, man, just whatever, man. It's like, and someone that's going to be at the event would see you and, like, no matter what you got on stage and said, they're like, you know, like, no, man, that dude's a jerk. I've seen him, blah, blah, blah. Does that make sense? So when yep. you're out there, you got your shirts on, and I tell my guys, it's like, hey, man, when you're wearing these shirts, you're on the job. You're on the, I, I don't, it's like, man, you got to hold yourself to a much higher standard. But if you don't have those higher standards in your employee manual, they don't know what they are. So that's why everything is so, everything is connected to everything. Everything is marketing. Uh, the best marketing you can do is satisfy the current clients you have right now. You're doing those videos, you got them in there, you're joking with them and laughing with them, all of that stuff. Uh, it, it, it's, it's everything that's connected to everything. You've got to have these systems in place. You've got to replace yourself as quickly as possible so that someone else is answering the phone, answering those questions. You got a sales guy. All the sales is done through the videos, through the website, uh, through the YouTube videos, all that. The lady that's answering the phone being super nice. They already love you. They're, they're trying to schedule the jobs. So when you do go to sell, the company, you're showing how much money you made last year profit-wise. I mean, we made 200 profit. So if you're making 200 profit a year, you're able to sell that company for almost a million dollars because someone's going to pay a million, knowing that they can go in, grow the business, and within three to five years, they're going to have their investment back, and they're going to be making money for the rest of their lives. Um, don't sell it. Sell 80% of it. Keep 20% always coming in. Learn from my mistakes. Uh, any questions before we get out of here? None for me. I'm good. Yeah. Five or six. Uh, anybody want to say anything before we get out of here? Like, I give you that as the last word. If, if someone watching this a week from now, two weeks from now, what do you think they're going to take away from it? Is it too much? Is it too much information? Do we overload them? No, I don't uh, think so. No, it's a good, uh, good ten thousand foot view. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Just I mean, they can they can access the videos that you that you're referring to, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, all of it. It's a, uh, I started doing this three and a half, almost four years ago now, only because when I'm on Facebook and I, in, in these different groups, I see so many of us. When I say us, I mean contractors get taken advantage of because they just don't know. Uh, Les Brown told me the problem with most people is they don't know what they don't know, but they think they know. It's like. Eh. The, I mean, so many of these guys are give me five grand, give me ten grand, give me nine grand, do this, you know, lock me into a contract and and get nothing for it. Uh, give me twenty five hundred for this dot com name. <laughs> and that stuff. And it's, it just kills me because in construction, man, we just we work too freaking hard for money, man. It's just a it's a for me it's a, it's a rewarding paycheck. Uh, you, you do the wood floors, whatever it is. You you, you sweat, you hard, like, but you, at the end of the day, you could see what you did. Whether you're building a kitchen, remodeling the roof, whatever. So you, you, you felt good. I felt good about myself at the end of the day. But you made good money too, but not good enough that you could just give it away to some you know some dude who who has a good sales pitch. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Well, I would certainly yeah. encourage anybody that's watching though to go back and check out some of your other videos. I've seen a couple of them two times and even like the one you sent me earlier to remind me that you don't have to go by that dot com there's there's little snippets in each mm -hmm. video that if they'll take a few notes and apply it they'll come out better in the long run so well, appreciate it man uh, so yeah so uh in, no matter when you're watching this you can always reach out to me uh through messenger email whatever it is but uh all right guys next wednesday we'll be doing it again uh, appreciate you guys being on here and sharing your time, sharing sharing what you've been through, what what, what works for you. I mean, it, it, we really got to, because, you know, the whole tide rags is the boat type of thing. It's like the more contractors watch this and see you guys and because it, it never changes, even when you sell the fucking business. Uh, it's always six steps forward, four steps back. Right, Alan? I mean, no matter how much we're doing, it's like, damn. It's like, but we're always making a little bit of gains, and we're learning every time. And sometimes we get to where I don't need to learn anything else. I don't need to go through more learning experiences. Like, what the hell? But that's life, man. It's just, it ain't ever going to be no smooth-selling road. It's just, I don't know if it would be fun that way. I, 
maybe I want to find out, but it, there's always something. It's always something. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. Brian Allen's contract is coming.